Hey, Saints, how, how y'all doing? Good morning. You know, <laughs> the message today, I think, is very, very critical. Just to start talking about the fact is that we really do need to move out of being uh, playing hypocrisy. The, the Bible is real. And the things that the New Testament has for those who accepted Christ, the anointed one, Yeshua, come on now, uh, Jesus, we need to understand this is not a game. This is, this is real. And we, we've been playing politics with it. And it's time for us to recognize that either Jesus Christ, Yeshua is your personal Lord and Savior, your Redeemer, or you start living the way the world wants you to be, conformed to the world. But the Bible said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Believers, it's time for us to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry is not the five-fold ministry gifts. They're supposed to equip one another, equip you, the believer, to do the work of the ministry. What's the work of the ministry? Go preach the gospel, man. Sister, go preach the gospel, amen? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. But God bless you, and I see you on the other side in a few minutes. Second, amen. God bless you. I'll check you later. Bye-bye. Amen. All right. You know, it's Sunday morning and it's time to really get into the word of God. And really, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. The whole gospel, our salvation is a real, you know, it's not, it's not a game. And, and that's why we, get it, we really got to start looking and applying the word of God in our life, everyday life. And I want to be able to talk this morning is a serious topic. It's called, it's talking about the fact is that we, as believers, have to sit there and, and you know, we said love one another. You know, that's, that's not a suggestion. That's a, a commandment to love one another. Huh? You know, even John 3, 16, and, 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 and I, I, I really now applaud those who would go to a football game and put up John 3, 16. Well, it says that God so loved the world, the world that he gave his only begotten son, the whosoever, whosoever. I mean, it does, the whosoever could be somebody from, from Australia, somebody from Canada, somebody from South America, somebody from America, somebody from North America. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's the whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the gospel. He told us to go preach the good news. And I know, and, and you know, that the history of man, I mean, come on, saints, the history, even the history behind Christianity. I'm talking about the ministry. I'm not talking about the faith. The faith itself is real. <laughs> but the institutions that have been crept into the church uh, and allow these 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 atrocities and things that occur. I mean, it started off from the, from from the very beginning. I mean, when they when 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 even when they was trying to bring even the Catholic Church and uh, Rome sit there and made Christianity the 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 faith or the religion of the country. Uh, you, we were trying to bring all these pagans in and and, and allowing them to to receive the gospel which is a good thing but we saw in the history it shows that when we're trying to consolidate and, and and that's i think a problem with man when they when, when you talk about when we talk about consolidating something sometimes we have a tendency we want to 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 be have that corruption that control you know that we we would rather make the institution of the gospel and, and, and not understanding that Christ is the head, we have a tendency to let man start dictating the behaviors of other people. 
uh, and controlling them and manipulating them. You know, you know when people sit there and say that religion was 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 designed to control people. You know, when it 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 has a validity when we know that it, it, the people who who either stand by religion, uh, what is paganism? Uh, <laughs> I mean. Uh, or Christianity is you get the people to come in and they want to use it as a weapon to punish people that don't get in line with their doctrine. I mean, we see it and we've seen it. You know, England, in, in England, they had the, the Church of England, there, there's a period in there called Bloody, a queen that was called Bloody Mary. And Bloody Mary was trying to get people to get online and follow the doctrine. You know, of, 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 of the Protestant movement or the or the Catholic movement. You know, what I mean, and, and people came to this country for the escape from to have religious freedom, the ability to to, to be able to worship uh, freely. You know, instead of somebody said, "No, you got to worship my way," huh? We got people sit there. You got all this different doctrine that tells you, you know. Baptized in the name of Jesus. That's the only way you're going to do it. And then you got something that said, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so I said, no, we don't want to do it that way. And then some said, no, we got to do it that way. You know, we, we get into the minor phase and, and we, we get to the point where we want to kill somebody. <laughs> and, and out of ignorance, out of ignorance we sit there and, and, and don't recognize that we we the body of christ the bible said that a tree is known by his fruit uh, by his fruit a tree is known by and that's why it's so important for us to bear the fruit of the spirit and i, I mean i've seen people have problems with that <laughs> oh you're too nice dude. You know, you, you're trying to make it Listen, there's people dying and going to hell and you sitting there trying to put in the legalism and the laws. Come on, saints. Come on. That's what we need to sit down and recognize the importance of preaching the gospel, the good news, not, not the bad news and, and, and kicking people out of church, not the bad news of fighting each other because somebody else got a, a way of preaching the gospel you know i mean i mean you got your people mad about the prosperity message you know you got people mad about joe joe Holstein because he talks about you know life is is, is all right and they're like oh you're trying to make it seem like it's okay and then you can do anything you want and you just think about it is they can't do what they want Meaning you can't tell people what to do. You can show in love. The fact is, let's, if you love somebody, don't slap them on the refrigerator. If you love somebody, don't cheat on them committing adultery. If you love somebody, don't try to manipulate and put somebody down, set somebody up, lie on somebody, bear false witness. In other words, the, the, even all the commandments are good. And yet, we think that we can control people through the law when we know that the law in itself on a flesh <laughs> going, going against the flesh it doesn't work but the love works love that covers a multitude of sin works there's people that wants to come into a place where can i can i grow in the liberty of christ can, can you give me, can I, do I have to come in and square it away? Or can I come in, can I come into, you know, like the hospital, the hospital, man, there's, a, there's an analogy people use. The, in the hospital, do you expect to see healed people? Or do you expect to see people coming to the hospital to be healed? I mean, there's people that come in the hospital that, have wounds, right? They had been in an accident. They or they had a they had an accident. They broke their leg, or they or they they, they cut themselves, or, or somebody beat them up, or something like that. And, and they go to the hospital 
to, to get that emergency care. <laughs> but some people sit there and say, no, I thought, I thought, you know, I'm just saying, this is how we look at when we look at our, our faith. Some people look at our faith and say, no, you're supposed to be squared away. No, you, you're supposed to be immediately changed, immediately fixed up and, and, and get yourself together. You're supposed to be violate any of the Ten Commandments. Is that real? And, if, and then you say, well, you're trying to say that it's okay. No, no, it's not okay for somebody to still be sick in the hospital. His expectation is that they come to the hospital so they can get healed. So they can get their, their their life back and back together, so they can go back out and live in the world. This expectation for somebody to bring somebody into the church, to bring them into the church, not the building, not your denomination, but the church, because that's where the ministry is. The church, the body of Christ, to bring them in introduce them to christ introduce them to the power the anointing of god and allow them to grow and they you know you when you go to the hospital people you you can't hear well no, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be healed yesterday you're supposed to be healed two days ago you must be healed a week ago you got some people that you know some people go to the hospital and they're terminally ill and they may not come back but you don't kick them out because they 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 they're not getting better. You uh, this the hospital don't do that. The hospital continue to work with people to help them and then you know make them comfortable. If they're not going to come, if they're not going to be healed, to at least make their life comfortable until they they move on on to to glory. Well. Why is that not acceptable to some of us in the body of Christ? Well, you know what I'm going to tell you, the Bible says there are trees known by fruit. <laughs> maybe maybe because you're not in the body of Christ. You're in a denomination. You're in a ministry. But you're not in the body of Christ. See, the real body of Christ is based on the fruits that we bear. You know, it, you know, Galatians 5, what fruit are we talking about? The, we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And, and that's found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. That, that's why we want to be able to uh, bear fruit. You know, because then we can do the work of the ministry with Christ being the head. And you know, people, I, you know, you got some people when they go to so, a church or ministry, they say, I got a baby, you know, especially you're talking about a mega ministry. They'll say, this, I got a problem with mega ministry <laughs> because I can't shake the person's head. It's not the person. I, don't, I mean, I have no problem with it, but my point is, that's not, it's not the person that we're focusing on. It's Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer. He's the one that will walk with you through life. He's the one that said, I never leave you, no forsake you. See, a ministry will leave you. A ministry will forsake you, but not the body of Christ. Not Christ himself. He said, then tell you, I, I, he said it. He put it down on, 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 in the book. I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. And that's why I want us to, let's, I know, but I'm saying, let's stop playing church. Let's, let's start giving people room and mercy and grace to grow because that's what they want to do. We got people, you know, our society, it, you know, in some cases, so jacked up, you get somebody that has been convicted of something, spending their time in prison in our society for years, and even probably now, <laughs> wants to 
continue to ridicule somebody that has did their time. We got people who want to ridicule people because of the color of the skin. It, you know, when we talk about the Spanish Inquisition, we talked about the, the Salem witchcraft, witchcraft, witch hunting. Uh, we talk about the atrocities of slavery and the, the dark age that the, that the church went, to, went through in, in Europe, uh, the dark age. Why was it called the dark age? It's because even the Bible was banned. And even in doing slavery, they gave them a, 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 a version of a Bible cut out the things that deals with liberty and salvation. And, 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 and being able to treat people the same. And, and we use it to teach our children. I'm talking about some of the stuff that have been taught since the beginning of even the dog or slave trade is to hate a people that you force into, uh, you force into, um, How would you say you you there was force into force a workforce and labor the, the you know the 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 church where was the church when that was happening where was the church when the the people was trying to do all the psychological things to to justify the person <laughs> standing as uh, servitude for servitude. You know, we're talking about a, a, a period of time. It don't, don't, don't worry about the fact I'm sitting there. It's, let's talk about the, the period of time where people were allowed to, to rape people, to, to, to beat people, to, I mean, think about I'm just talking about where's the church when all those things, and when you're talking about the sale of witchcraft, and when you're talking about the dog age, the church. You, we are the church. And I'm saying is, let's start letting people see what we're about. So people can understand that we're about loving one another. Instead of sitting there condemning and judging one another. We're not there. That's not what we're about. We're about loving one another. As long as we do that, it makes a big difference. It makes a difference when we sit there and learn to love one another. You know, that's what Christ wants us to do, is to love one another. I was sitting there, somebody said, uh, uh, I thought they sent a text. I saw a message come through. It is a message somewhere in there. <laughs> Let's see if we can find it. Let's check it out. Uh, but the, the point is that it's so important for us to, to, to be the church, live and show. What, tell me, you tell me, is the church something that is designed to go and point out the faults and fears of people? Or is the church supposed to be preaching the gospel? And, and, and for those who don't know, for those who don't know, Christ said that go preach and teach the gospel. He didn't say go and preach the law so that we can sit there and condemn somebody because they're not lined up with the law. <laughs> he said go preach to the fact that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And yet we allow all that junk to creep back in. And I'm talking about it crept back in way before it came to this country. And yet it was, and but it that 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 those legalism and and then and, and the, the, the I mean we go back to church history. I think that's what I probably do better because some of y'all get well, some people may get offended about the the atrocities of the 400 years of slavery in this country. Let me talk about the fact I'm talking about when the church, the body of Christ, 
from the beginning had people, you know, I mean, first we was, we was, we was tracked down, we were, we were hunted down by uh, the pagans, you know, people that, that <laughs> we call it paganism, uh, that didn't want to believe and accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They didn't want to. Uh, Rome, you know, it's funny. I think it, it, Rome was killing, going about persecuting the church. When they're talking about the <coughs> the arena where they had people burned to the stakes, and 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 the person because they 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 heard the good news, the gospel, they they praise God while they were being burnt in the stakes. And it caused more people to say, I want that because the paganism doesn't work. It doesn't give me that freedom. It doesn't give me that love. It doesn't give me that conviction. People was fed to the lions because of believing in the gospel, the good news. <laughs> That's powerful. That was the Holy Spirit moving. It wasn't moved because it was preaching the law. It was moved because it was preaching the good news, the gospel that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to come into his kingdom. You know, that, that little sign behind me that talked about the fact is the kingdom of God. Let me put it over here as you can see. Walking in the kingdom of God. Walking in the kingdom of God is not a place where you get persecuted. Or put down. It's not a place where you divide people based on the color of their skin. It's not a place where in walking the kingdom, it's not not in the kingdom, not in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, we, we embrace one another, we love one another. You know, Christ gave us a commandment in John 13, 34. He said, New commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. 35 says, and this, men will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. So, you know, so, so when people sit there and, 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 and go back to the law, you know, when that woman's caught in the act of adultery, the law, that's, that's what the law does, is to stone her. And everybody that they heard this lady was been accused and I guess convicted to, to be an adulterer. Left the man all up. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know how you have adultery if you don't have a person, right? Left the man, he don't know, caught in a very act of adultery. And everybody that's supposed to have been in the in, in the Jewish community, they're supposed to have the covenant with God picked up stones and was ready to stone that lady. But the reality was that he, that's what Christ said, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And maybe they should have told us from the beginning now. <laughs> we throw verbal stones today. We, we, we sit there and try to bring people down and, and credit, they go out there, their character, their, 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 their credibility. Because, well, you know, uh, you, you, you have sinned somewhere. You, you have fallen short somewhere. You, 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 didn't, you didn't quote correctly. You, know, you, don't, you don't believe in the way I believe. So we're going to throw stones at you because you ain't got that 100% act together. And yet Christ said, he who without sin, let him cast the first stone. And every last one of those people, listen to saints, listen to those who, who are interested in coming into the body of Christ. Christ said, he who without sin, let him cast the first stone. And then what we realized was that everybody from the oldest person to the youngest person had to walk away because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's not to say that we're supposed to be a, a given license to the gospel. I mean, to, to sin. <laughs> we're trying to say is, 
you don't have the authority if you have sinned in one area. The Bible says if you sin at one point, you have sinned at all. If you're going to go by the law. Because the curse of the law. There is no, there is no, there is no second guess. There is no opportunity. The, the, the wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible said based on the law. But the gospel says that mercy and grace came through Jesus Christ. And we supposed to be able to let people know there's a mercy and there's a grace that comes through the gospel, man. That's what we're going to tell people. We'll show people that there's, there's a mercy and grace. He gave us grace. Every last one of us been given grace. And we're supposed to be able to use that grace. You know, the Bible said freely give, and freely you should give it away to other people. Give them the mercy and the grace. And that's what I want to be able to talk about today. It's the fact is, because you got people that, that will walk away from you because you're talking about the gospel. We say, I hear people sit there and talk about walking in the kingdom. You've got to talk about the kingdom. What are we talking about the kingdom? And in the kingdom, there's the good news that Christ has died and rose again to help us receive and redeem. There's people hurt and dying. There's people that are sick and dying. There's people who hurt mentally. There's people who have been raped and all those other things. They don't need the law. They need the mercy and the grace and the love of God. And we are supposed to show them that love. We're supposed to embrace people, to allow them to know the love and the mercy of God. Not the law. Somebody said, well, you, you can't, we, we're supposed to follow the law. Well, you're not following the law. You have, if you follow the law, you must follow all of it. And that's how now, even if today in the 2020, you know, 2022, our politics have moved and brought, and brought Christianity in with it and, 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 and converted and perverted it where people can talk balance and do baby do balance to people that don't line up with the policies of the political parties. We got people that sit there willing to go ahead and kill somebody because they feel that the policy is based on the Bible, and if it's based on the Bible, if somebody violates something, we got we have the right to go kill them. And that's not what Chris, that's not that's, that's not what the New Testament is about. The New Testament is not about you going to kill somebody. The New Testament even talks about the fact is that those people that have uh, been given the license to enforce the law, they don't. They don't hold the sword in vain. They're supposed to go and execute judgment about those things that people violate or break laws on. But somewhere along the line, we we all supposed to do it. <laughs> you got preachers sitting there saying, we, look, we love one another. You got people sitting there. I, I talked about it two weeks ago. <laughs> Somebody sitting there said, I, I don't want Democrats in my party, in my church. Get them out. There's demons and all that stuff. And then somebody probably went to, probably was recorded somewhere in the, in the, uh, the uh, uh, person who don't like Republicans probably got them on the stage somewhere saying, get those out there, demons and all that other stuff. We, 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 it crap. We don't crap. Listen, don't, I'm asking you, don't let bigotry and hatred creep into your ministry because i'm gonna tell you something if you do just make sure it's not compatible with the doctrine with the gospel you need to understand that so what i want to do and uh <laughs> show you real quick this morning i put up the uh the, the my study that i i wanted to show you is that if you put up here it says Black or white supremacy nor bigotry are compatible with the gospel.
days that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.